Hey, it's Francis Check from Video Rail Media, and today we're going to be taking a look at how we created this video. Okay, so a lot of you have been asking for tutorial on this video, but if I was to make a tutorial on this whole thing, it would probably be around three hours. So what I'm thinking is I may just do an overview for you all and maybe go into depth on a few things. But if I was to cover everything that I put into this project, it would just take too long. So um, I guess let's go ahead and get started with the first shot. Okay, so for this first shot, we have BB-8 rolling up to the camera, it kind of looks around, and then he takes off. And please excuse, I have to use draft rendering because this scene is so massive, um, it would just take too long to render just for a few seconds of video. So for most of it, I will be using the draft renderer just to get my point across because I have depth of field and motion blur, and even with that off, it just takes too long to render. The most requested part of the tutorial that all of you asked for was the BB-8 motion and how I got this look for him moving around and all that and I guess the best way that I figured out was just using a lot of null objects in conjunction with the controls inside of Element 3D. So the first thing I knew I wanted to do is add in that kind of head wobble that he has just like in the movie. Um, so what I did is I actually went into Element and I put his head on an auxiliary animation channel. I went to the head and I set that to channel two. So basically what that lets me do is once I go into my auxiliary animation channel, I go to channel two and go to the rotation, you can actually see how now I can actually move his head back and forth. Um, I didn't want to keyframe it going back and forth, back and forth, it would just take too long. So what I did is I actually just wrote an expression for the Z rotation. And then I parented the Z rotation to a separate layer uh, where I have a slider layer. And essentially what this does is controls the amount of wiggle. So if I back up here and actually show you the keyframes, you can see how it goes from being 7% um, and it goes down to zero where you don't want any head wobble. So if we were to change this to a ridiculous amount, like 80, you could see how his head is just going all over the place. We don't want that. Um, but if we just change this to something like seven, then you can kind of see how his head just kind of moves around a little bit as he's moving. Um, and I had to do some extra work on the head for whenever he rotates uh, his head. So if I go in here and I show you these keyframes, it took a little bit of work because I wanted this sort of robotic feel like it you can't just put two keyframes and have his head move like that you have to have it kind of come back so it kind of looks like it's mechanical so if you look forward you can kind of see how it kind of is a jittery motion almost so um, as far as his his main body here um, I had a two path nulls so I had one for when he uh, was coming at the camera just like this and he stops and then I had another null position for when he takes off again. And I know it seems kind of confusing, but I was trying to keep it on just one path, but it just doesn't work. I, I tried it, at least for this shot, it didn't work. So you can see I have the position. So he starts right here. He kind of goes side to side. I don't even know if you can see that. Actually, let me solo these. There we go. So if you look at that null object, and kind of see how it's this path on that planar motion and he stops right here and then this null takes over once he gets that close and then it just takes him off so all I did for this to make it parented is I went into my element settings and I created a group null for BB-8 on group 2 so that meant that I could um, just move him wherever I needed to. So if I go into 
my path options. This is actually the null object that was created by Element. I just renamed it to path one. So if you ever just click on create group null, it'll create something that looks more like this. Um, it'll be red instead of yellow. Um, but now I can just move him around and even if I wanted to, maybe if I wanted him to really go to one side at one point in the video, I could just move him over like this. And now if I play this back, kind of see how he's rolling. Of course his rotation is off. Maybe not by much, but yeah, <laughs> you get the idea. That's as far as, not as the rotation, but as far as movement, um, that's how I accomplished that. Now, rotation was a bit trickier because you have to make it look like he's rolling in the direction that he's moving. And I've seen, there's a lot of people who will just animate it, but it's always going in one direction. It just doesn't look right. So that pretty much took the most time out of this video was to try and get that rotation look correct and I just used an auxiliary animation channel for the body as well so if we go into group 2 and we open up the auxiliary animation channel and go to group 1 so this is what the body is being controlled by um, I'll just open up all these different channels right here and this is what's controlling the rotation so um, if I go scroll forward, there's this one that controls that movement, one that controls that movement, and one that controls that movement. So um, let me go ahead, maybe I'll just kind of redo this so you can see what it looks like. Hopefully I don't mess this up. <laughs> okay, so let's copy this. And let's see, so now he's not moving with any sort of rotation. Looks horrible, okay. <laughs> so let's start. The first thing we need um, is that we know we want him rolling forward like this. So let's go to the very beginning and let's keyframe our X value and let's move forward to the point to where he stops, which happens to be right there. I'm not, I could just check the keyframe, which is right here actually. <laughs> I'm wasting time, okay. And let's just animate this to a value. We're not sure what we may need, so let's just go forward and let's see how this looks. So this is obviously ridiculously slow. Okay, so let's crank this up quite a bit. Still way too slow, okay. Sheesh, okay. <laughs> Let's keep on going. And somewhere like right here looks pretty good, but we need to keep in mind that he doesn't just like stop and it's like boom. It shouldn't be like that. We wanna go ahead and right click on this, go to keyframe assistant and choose easy ease. So that way he, it's, he slows down gradually, kinda just stops like that. So let's go and watch this back. Looking pretty good, except for that one part right there. We'll fix that in just a bit. But as far as that motion right there, that, that looked pretty good. Okay, so he's not going in a straight line. If you if you look at this line right here, it kind of goes off. It comes more to this side, and then kind of comes back a little bit. So what we're going to have to do about that is look into our other rotation settings. So let's go ahead and keyframe our Y here. Let's go back until he starts turning, which is right about here in our null settings. And let's go ahead and keyframe that. Let's go to where he stops rolling that direction, which is right about here. And let's go ahead and add a keyframe. I think, Okay, and let's go ahead and turn these into easy ease keyframes as well. Um, so that way it's more of a gradual process. Okay, easy ease. And let's play this back. So you can kind of see now how he's kind of rolling in that direction and then we'll need him to kind of roll back. So we'll add another keyframe here and we'll kind of move it. Actually, maybe I went too far. I want him to roll back that way. So he's rolling like this. Okay, let's see here. That looks a little off. Um, maybe let's just not do it so much. That looks pretty good. Really, something like this you can't just do in, in like a few minutes. It's something that does take a little bit of time. But the best way that I figured out is doing the actual movement with the null object and then putting the body on an auxiliary animation channel and the head on an auxiliary animation channel 
and just animating all those uh, different values separately. So I think that's pretty much that for the motion. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring these back in. These are the original keyframes. You can kind of see some of it wasn't actually <laughs> easy ease in the very beginning because he was just moving straight and there was no need for a gradual transition. And then he just takes off again. So that's pretty much how I got everything to work as far as movement. I'm sorry, this is gonna be a really long tutorial. This is one of those things I can't really speed through it or else it won't make too much sense. This probably doesn't even make sense. Why are you even watching this? Another question I got asked a lot was like the set extension, like all these different assets and everybody was wondering uh, where I got them. And if I go ahead and open up Element 3D here, um, let's go ahead and go over here. This is a little texture I made for the floor. So this was custom. Um, this doesn't come with uh, Star Pack. And I will have the project files for download um, so you can get this texture. Um, there will be a little donate button. Uh, you don't have to, you can get it for free, but uh, if you wanna help out, that'd be great. Okay, so here's the main scene. Um, this is where BB-8 rolls through. And these models right here, it was some random thing I got online. I just added a few assets from the Motion Design 2 pack uh, from Video Copilot. Okay, and for the side here, um, I modeled these little beams and I textured them inside of Substance Painter. This is actually just a bump map. I knew I wouldn't really need too much detail, so I just settled for bump maps on these. Um, it actually looks really good. Um, you can bring these forward. You can actually see how these actually work. Uh, it's an entire chunk that you can just take out and um, I just kind of put them together and they kind of work like that. So that's pretty much what I did for the first scene. And also the beams outside um, are for motion design too. It's actually just one beam that I stretched on the X axis like this. So I just kind of stretched that into place and set it and it looks like the edge of a hanger. The craziest part is that this is actually the texture for BB-8. Um, I literally just threw this on there and if I turn up the this right here, you can actually see that that's BB-8's texture for the body. And no one ever knew that. Yep. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for this scene right here. It's fairly simple. I had this main hanger on the first group. I had BB-8 on the second group so that way I could uh, animate him with the auxiliary animation channels. And then I had the floor on group three. So that's pretty much it. Also, the environment map I used was from Backlight, I'm also from Video Copilot. So it's this one right here. It's number 33 in the category. Another tip is whenever you're gonna be doing anything with a lot of reflections, especially like this, if you can kind of see this right here, I wanted BB-8 to reflect the room. So I just selected the model and changed it to a spherical reflection. That way you could actually see the reflection of the room on BB-8. So keep that in mind. It does slow down your render times just a little bit, but it is worth it and it does make it look better. Okay, so on to the next shot. <laughs> okay, this one has a load of stuff. In a shot four here, we have this room um, that has this holographic galaxy with these different planets and paths and it's a really awesome scene, but everybody was wondering, like, how in the heck did you get that room model? And, like, how did you make it? And, well, to tell you the truth, it's actually just a bunch of assets put together. So if I go into Element 3D, you can actually see what I did here. So the room is composed of a bunch of elements from Motion Design 2-Pack from Video Copilot. And also, if you ever want to zoom out in Element, hold down Alt on your keyboard and then scroll. And that lets you zoom in and out inside of Element. So you're actually changing your camera zoom. Um, so that way you can really see things a lot better. Okay, so here's the room uh, right here. So click on these assets here. What I actually did is I mirrored the room. So it's actually mirroring the room exactly from the other side. And if you're not sure how to do that, um, all you have to do is go onto your group settings and go to the symmetry uh, panel right here, it's this one right here, and you can literally just copy the other side exactly how you place this side. So it makes it very symmetrical, um, 
there's no glitches it doesn't look like it's off it's perfectly the same as the other side and it really does save a lot of time when you're trying to put a bunch of beams together like this as for the textures are pretty standard um, most of the textures are from the pro shaders 2 pack and um, I just kind of threw them on it looks pretty good okay and the next question we got asked a lot was how did you create that volumetric looking galaxy and this was actually using our product Fractalrama and it's for creating volumetric looking effects inside of Element 3D so it actually comes with 30 different elements of smoke and galaxy textures and they're mapped onto uh, 3D planes so it gives the illusion of being a volumetric effect except it's running real time inside of Element 3D. So if you'd like to check it out, um, you can actually check out our website. Uh, so Fractal Rama comes with 30 pre-rendered 4K stills of these fractal textures. And it also comes with six displaced planes you can use and you can move those around. It was actually inspired from the Star Trek Into Darkness credits made by Video Copilot. So if you scroll through here, you can kind of see what it looks like um, with creating these kind of effects. And this is all inside of Element 3D. Uh, you can create some really impressive space scenes. And here's actually one of the examples um, <laughs> where I got the idea from. I was like, hey, I could make a BB-8 video with this. So that's what I did. Okay, so back to this. Um, how we created this, most of the textures inside of Fractal Rama do not look like this. Um, we give you the raw files so you can customize them. So if I go back here, and I open up this composition. Here's some of the fractal textures that we used. So most of them aren't like spinning like this, but the way to do this is easy. You just go into After Effects and you just type in Liquify. And it has a brush inside of here where you can literally just twirl it. So you can actually just spin this. You can also do this in Photoshop or you can warp it around. And once we got all these different textures and as you can see these are really high quality you can zoom in and you can see the detail on these once we had all of them twirled around we just added some color correction on top of it and we were done that was literally it so once we had these textures we went back into our room here and we just compiled a bunch of different planes to create the illusion of a volumetric galaxy. So here's that little uh, trail we have. This is also the same thing. If I reset this, you kind of see it's just a plane uh, that we mapped a texture onto. And you can spin around it and it looks three dimensional and it renders extremely quickly. So if I go ahead and go through these options here, I kind of turn these back on one by one before we hit the other textures. Okay, so this was the one texture. You can kind of see how it fades out in and out um, so it kind of creates illusion to where you cannot see the edge so if we turn these on one by one you'll start to see how it kind of compiles and it makes up one effect just like this it makes this really really neat looking galaxy also we threw in some different sphere models so if I reset the viewer here we just created this and how we got the wireframe texture is it's actually built into Element 3D V2. There's just this little wireframe mode here, and we just overlaid that, we made an orange planet, and then we made a blue planet. So once we had these, we kept them separated, except they're both on group three, and that way we could actually just spread them out in space. So if we go back to our BB-8 render, you can kind of see how they're kind of just spread throughout randomly. So you can see them, they're all over in the scene and we just used Element 3D's particle replicator and just spread them out in a 3D space and it worked really well. Okay and down to our last shot um, this is where we see Kylo Ren in the background and BB-8 is freaked out. <laughs> so everybody was wondering like where did you get that model and all that and I just got it online um, I just searched around for a while and I found one I'll try to find where I got it from so I can give that person credit if you modeled this I am extremely sorry. Okay, <laughs> but here, anyways, let's go into our scene setup and let's check it out. So for Kylo Ren, he was pre-rigged. So all I had to do was animate him really quickly. 
and uh, just do a really horrible job. Yep, it looks pretty bad. It's like, why would you do this to me? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so if we kind of scroll through here, I just animated him really quick, and he's off from a distance, so it didn't really matter too much on how it looked. So it kind of just turns on his lightsaber. Okay, um, sorry, this is crazy. Um, so if you look at this, you may be wondering how did you get the saber glow in there? You can actually kind of see his lightsaber right here. And how I did that, is we can actually see this. He actually did have a lightsaber on him with the model, except I disabled it, but I put visible to reflections. So I turned this on. This is actually what's casting that light. So that's pretty much all I did. I just set Kylo Ren, the model, him, <laughs> to a spherical reflection. So if I actually shut this off, you can see that's that's what it would normally look like unless you changed it to spherical. So if you kind of spin around, you can actually see how that's reflecting off of Kylo Ren here. So that's how I got that. Um, I just animated it and threw it in, and that's what I came up with. And it's pretty obvious what I used for the lightsaber itself, but I actually did get asked. If you're not familiar, um, Video Copilot makes this plugin called Saber. It's free, you can download it. And you can create any sort of lightsaber effects, energy. You can scroll through here and kind of see I animated it on. This is going to take forever. Yep. The struggle is real. <laughs> All editors do that. We all make our own sound effects. <laughs> okay, so we play this back, kind of see how that animates on. And I couldn't keep it in a 3D space because with, there was some camera wiggle. And if you add one layer, when you have a camera wiggle effect going on, it will just throw off everything. So to save you some time and some hassle and you not wanting to throw your computer out the window, Whenever you're going to be doing any sort of effect, make sure that you lock down your camera movements and then go on to editing your lightsaber or whatever it is. Because I actually animated this, I keyframed it frame by frame, and I added another layer that was essential for creating the scene, and it just threw off the lightsaber. It was like over here where it was supposed to be here, and yeah, it's not fun. So be sure you do that every single time. <laughs> So I think that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, I would be happy to reply to them. Just leave them down in the comments section. So be sure to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We post a lot of deals on there. We recently had one that was 25% off of our bundle. And that's the, on the additional 20% that you save. So whew, quite a deal. <laughs> and pretty soon um, we're gonna have a deal where you can buy a Locust Pack and you get Fractal Rama for free. So Keep an eye out and make sure you don't miss that deal because that's probably only going to come once. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll have the project files down in the description. So if you want to download all this, you will have to have Fractal Rama and Star Pack from Video Book Copilot and Saber. But once you have all those plugins installed and products, you can open this project up and it should work just fine. And you can animate BB-8 and move it around the scene and make your own video. All right, well, this has been Francis Check from Video Royal Media, and have a great day.